Oh boy. Uh, I think we need to look at the actual mechanism at this point and try to try to understand it. I had the distinct feeling that all of this is invisible. I don't know. Let's find out. Okay, let me just zoom in on this diagram a bit, make it a little bigger on the screen. Just a bit too much. Okay, let's see if we can identify these parts. Now the diagram's kind of upside down from what you're looking at. So first one would be this 168, this part here. And that part is right here. It moves, but it's a little it's a little sticky. Okay. The next part we're interested in is 176. That's this this part here, and that's here. Okay, so I can see a very very light spring over here, pulling this pulling this. What's it doing exactly? So isn't this supposed to somehow engage with these pins? So how can that be? Um, okay, look at the diagram. So in the diagram, oh, okay, right at the top it says shut off position. Maybe this isn't in the shut off position. That's a bit of a problem. Now is the, uh, can I see if the wheel gap, the gear gap, is, yeah it is. And you couldn't do this if the gap wasn't in place. So it's, it's in the stop, it's in the play position really. So how do those things ever engage? How, how would they ever, like, how would this ever get down into here? Like that. Wow, who thought this up? Oh my gosh. So, so this part gets raised because there's a ramp right over here. And as this wheel turns around, it, this thing would be driven up the ramp and go up. Now, it stays up like this. It goes way up. It, it really pushes hard. It goes up like that. Okay, so that's operating the, uh, the, the record drop, this part. The first part, it puts this down. Now, it doesn't look like it can engage with anything yet. Are, are these the pins on the diagram? What if I just lubricate this? I didn't really get this lubricate. I lubricate this so it's so it's loose. Feel it feels like it's got a spring, like it's going one way or the other. Look like what it's doing actually. You know what this, this is a railroad track changer. So in this position, this track is exposed. And then when this thing flips over, now it's this track. The train comes down a different track. It's a track switching thing. Gotta, you know, like, like somebody didn't sit down and think this whole thing up all at once. They, uh, you know, this is an evolutionary thing. It went on for, for decades as people improve these mechanisms and uh, made little improvements. I don't think anybody sat down and thought this whole thing up at once because, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. So let's go back to this thing. Is it, is it? Well, yeah, well, you really want it in one of two positions. You really don't want it anywhere in between. So, I mean, it moves. The problem here is right at the end. So, so here's the rod that that is uh, pushing from the tone arm. And I see it's underneath here. We can't really see what's going on, but we did see it from the top. not in any way connected to any of this. So, so all this stuff comes into play after this wheel starts turning. So 
So how can there be a problem down here? Let's read, let's read, read what it says again. It's right on the screen there. Uh, down here. No, where, where was it? It was down here. Uh, keep, the last record keeps repeating, even though that's not what this machine does. It just doesn't pick up at the end. But let's see. Readjust change lever 176 so that with a record on and spindle locked, there's about a sixteenth of an inch clearance between what? Between the change lever and guide pin of the cam follower. Guide pin. Guide pin. Well, who's the guide pin? Who's got a guide pin here? Is this the guide pin? Is that the guide pin? Are those the guide pins? That has to be something to do with this arm. 176. One set, whoops, 176. After the last record of the stack drops, the change lever guides the cam follower. Cam follower. Okay, so cam follower. What are they talking about? They're talking about a piece that follows this cam groove. Is that a cam follower? A cam follower. They're calling this the cam follower. 182. No, 168. 168. One, am I looking at the wrong thing? 168. This is the cam follower. But this isn't running in the cam. I don't know what they mean by cam follower. Maybe it does. Maybe it is running inside that cam somehow. Maybe, maybe, maybe this pin is in the, is in the groove. Uh, I don't know. Take a look. Well, I can move this back and forth, so it can't be in much of a groove. How's this? Let's just read what the in, to initiate to initiate shutoff. The cam follower lever is brought into position longer end towards the center of the main cam. <laughs> you know, the thing about this is every sentence requires 10 minutes of study to understand it. After the tone arm has swung over the tone arm rest, the guide post B, figure 15. Oh, here they're naming, oh, up here, up here. What? Figure 15, guide post. Well, they give the number Guide post. B. It was guide post. Guide post B. Guide post B. Guide post. Here's B. What's it pointing at? This is the guide post under here. Oh my gosh. Of the main lever. The main lever. 220 contacts the outside of the main cam, whose vertical profile causes the tone arm to lower onto its support. The traversing of the tone arm releases the latch from its support. However, <laughs> however, not that you understand anything yet, but however, however that stuff you don't understand, the main cam keeps the switch arm in its play position until the end of the change cycle. Oh, I got it. When the main cam returns to its zero position, the switch arm drops into the cutout in the main cam, the line switch is operated, and the drive wheel is disengaged. That's a, just a great story. I really enjoyed it. I have to read it again and again and again. <laughs> well, so, am I going to be able to figure this out? Yeah, if I spend long enough on this fiddling around, yeah, sure, anybody could figure it out spend long enough on it. The question is what are we going to do about what's happening? What can we do? What, what are our options? Our options are really limited here. You know, there's nothing bent. There's nothing missing. I don't believe there's springs missing. I don't believe anything is actually wrong. So why won't it work? Because something isn't going where it's supposed to go. And what is that? So we seem to be, this bar seems to go forward, seems to push the thing. 
there's never any engagement. The, the lever that's supposed to move in and engage doesn't. So, so it would seem to me. We don't have a platter on, so we don't really have the gear to look at, but we can look at the other gear that it's supposed to engage with. And, and I don't understand this. Just because the tone arm is quicker, why does it make it unable to kick it away? There must be something in there they're not quite explaining. It probably comes down to the little angles of this piece of metal. I'm going to guess that's what it is. So, so, so why, why didn't it even engage? And it's spring loaded. Let's look at that in the diagram. Why is there a spring pulling this in as if it's going to engage every time? It's always in this position, isn't it? It never ever changes. It's always right here. That can't be right. Okay, let's look back in the manual here and see if we can figure out uh, what. So, something is pulling this piece back. Something is pulling that back, pulling it in. Something is pulling it in. Uh, is that a spring right in there? Doesn't look like it. I don't see anything here. Something's pulling it back. Let's go to the exploded diagram down here. Go, oh boy, oh boy. So yeah, this will help. That's for sure. Um, <laughs> and which part is it? It's coming up out of here. It's coming down. It's down here. And it's really showing it. Likely, I'm not spotting it. Oh my, I can't figure this out. I don't recognize it. Oh, no, I don't, I don't recognize the part. Where, where's that uh, cam follower funny uh, scythe? Oh, oh, there are a whole bunch more parts. Oh my gosh, look at them all. Where's the scythe? Where is the scythe? Here's, here's the parts we're talking about. like a spring. Oh, here we are. This is the part. What's that right there? 167. What is 167? 167. Where's the numbering? 167. Snap ring. Snap ring. Doesn't sound like a spring to me. Snap ring. So, now this isn't the piece that's getting pulled back. It's, it's this up here. It's this, it's this piece, I think, 198, and what, what is 201? 201 is a spring standing vertical in there for reasons I don't know. 201, is it a broken spring, is that what I'm saying? Coiled spring, coil spring, coiled spring, why, why not? tension spring, coiled spring, what do they mean by that? Leaf spring. Wow, there are all kinds of springs in here with different names. Coiled spring. Okay, only one of them. Let's look back again. Right there. Stuck in here. Doesn't seem to have anything to do with this, though. Actually, you can see that and this line shows you where it goes. It's way over here. It's a mysterious thing sticking up on this piece that I don't know what it does. Oh, well, it depends how you rotate this, where the spring ends up. Yeah, 
Okay, let's look for that spring and see what's going on here. Oh, right. I'm looking at the full screen version of that, uh, incidentally. So, okay. So we want to flip it back over. So I think the spring it was just talking about. It's this thing right here. Oh, I look at it. It's, it's attached. Okay, so this spring is attached to a lever. I can see it moving under there. It's a little. Can I can I get this on there? Okay, so you can see the spring right here, and watch the lever. See, there's a lever under there. That's got to be part of this mechanism. Now, is is that the spring? I don't think that's the spring that's pushing that other thing, is it? So the, the operating position of this is such that all these things may not make sense relative to what I, I'm thinking because it's not in the right position. So this spring is sitting here, it's, it's doing nothing here, it's got to be somewhere else to do something, maybe? maybe. So, so it's in the play position, it's in the play position. So what would happen is the whole time the record is playing, this is sitting here. This arm is moving in. This arm is not involved with this, is it? I don't think so. So, so what's the deal with this spring, and why is that piece snapping? It's this. It's this spring, isn't it? Is it this spring? I don't think so. So this spring here is just doing this part of the mechanism. Turning a sleeve up in here? I don't think so. No. I got all greased up. All greased up and nowhere to go. Well, I know the Hail Mary lubrication method is becoming more and more attractive all the time. But but these are exactly the kind of things you don't want to lubricate necessarily. At least in some record players. How could I turn that wheel? How could I turn this wheel? The platter's off. Why can't I turn it to myself? What's what's stopping me from just turning it? I gotta figure out which way to turn it first. Um, so the platter ladder is turning this way. So when this engages, it goes this way. Actually, it's counterintuitive. I thought it would be the other way. It will go this way. Okay, it appears to have done something over here in the uh, audio switch area. We're coming around. I'm not watching everything. So this is now at the peak of its ramp. The uh, this piece is nowhere near this piece. This has become solid in place. Where are we now? We're 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 in the process of the tone arm would be heading back. I think. I'm not even sure. If we're in the. Uh, Start up or ending. Here's the the gap. Let's see it right in here. With that little engagement thing. Oh, guess what? I can see now. Look at this. Aha. Uh Aha. -huh. Uh -huh. So this is what. So in the position it was in, this thing was 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 I think pushed forward by this piece causing this piece to come out. Seems counterintuitive. You don't want this to come out till we're right at the end. Going around, going around. 
It's interesting. I get the feel of what this is like to, to, to move, how hard it is. Very hard reading here. And I think we're almost back in the neutral spot right here. There. Right at the last moment, this, this engaged. at the last moment. Does that make sense? Don't have to worry too much about the on off switch itself. Okay, we're dropping the record. Record has dropped. Tone arm's coming over. Tone arm going down. I need more lubrication in here for sure. I'm coming around and we're, we're playing. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> uh, often in these situations, after monkeying around for a while and all this kind of stuff, suddenly things start working. <laughs> Maybe I'll be lucky. Maybe that's what will happen here. In the meantime, I'm going into cleanup mode. Oh boy. We're really close. Everything seems to be moving freely. Everything seems to be okay. Everything seems to be okay. What, what, what if this is defective? It looks just fine. A piece of metal sitting right there. It all looks fine. Like that little kicker was missing. It wouldn't get anywhere. Okay, down you go. like the neutral position over here. I'm going to be the motor. Should be in the neutral position because I turned that wheel until it was. Uh, just in case the uh, spindle has a bearing on things. That's kind of a pun, eh? Bearing? <laughs> Where is it? I also lost this nice little ring here. We don't want to lose that. Um, spindle. Hello, spindle. Well, the, the spindle has disappeared. There it is. Um, we need to put power. No, I'm the motor. I'm the motor. Motor's turning this. Let me now push the uh, start button here. Let's go back a little bit further. Pretty hard to turn this. That's easier again. That's the end of the road there. stop function should also trigger this. You know, I just move that again. This lever feels like it's pushing on nothing. Okay, let's investigate from that angle. So 
lever appears to be pushing on nothing. Uh, how do you get this out of here now? You have to go all the way to start. Okay, well, let's get this into the proper kind of neutral clay position. There. Nothing holding the platter on. Did I, did I? The platter is just going to come right off. You have to put the platter lock back on. top here. Well, I hope that doesn't, maybe that will disturb, disturb the operation even, lifting the platter that way. So I'm going to move the gears up and down. Can I feel it? Hear it, rather? That was the... Maybe disengaging completely. This may not be any way to test this. And what am I doing now? I did all that and I forgot what, I'm, what I got around here for. It was... I don't know. Let's engage the mechanism. Oh yeah, that's right. The uh, stop button was doing nothing. Now when I move it into the stop position, it gets stuck. Like that. Okay, I just did it. Son of a gun. Maybe we can unstick it from here. Yes, I can. Okay, so we'll look at this mechanism and try to figure out what is going on with this, because it's related. Oh, boy. Look at all this stuff going. Let me play a little lever here. We want to start. I start moving this this main arm. And I'm stuck in that position now. Can I gain? Can I? Can I free it up here by fooling it? Doesn't look like it. Looks like now I have to drive this wheel. I've got the. Uh, ladder connected to it. Well, only until we move this a little bit this way. Make sure I'm spinning the... Can't get it to engage. Now, it could be the... Uh... No, it looks like there's gears there. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> There's been a lot of time today, and uh, I don't feel that I've really solved anything. I mean, what am I going to do in the end, anyway? Even if I figure out how it works, I'm hoping I figure out how it works, and it'll be obvious how it's not working. That's that's my theory. Get nowhere here. Can't engage it. Can't. We can't, we can't, it can't, it won't, it don't. Can't, it won't, it don't. So all this time uh, doing this kind of thing is also, it's, it's valuable in the sense that 
bits by little bits and pieces. I'm getting more and more familiar with the mechanism. That's kind of the way it goes. Ooh, it's a really heavy, heavy record player. Holy smokes. Of course, it's got the heavy platter on it. That's what's making it so heavy. Come on, record player. Let's let the motor do the work this time and see if that's any different. Are we safe? They appear to be safe. Five for every revolution. Now, what is there that's doing something five times faster than this? The uh, the idler wheel. The idler wheel. Maybe I moved that up somehow. Come on, Mr. Record Player. Go in the stop position. Wait. I put I put a camera under there. Wow. Then that it really becomes confusing. It's just nothing happened at all. This just have to be over here, maybe. It's trying to play a record when there's none to play. Well, I pushed start, so it makes sense that it tried to start. Oh, it worked. <laughs> Suddenly it worked. Completely. Click off. Nah, it doesn't quite get there. Well, that was kind of interesting. What exactly happened there? Can I make it happen again? Strain this to make it work. Let's see that again. First. No. It worked the one time there. doesn't know there's no record. So the no record thing. Um, other record player. Hey, what happened? <laughs> I can't keep up with it. So other record players have an overarm that you swing over sits on top of the stack of records and that overarm when it drops when, when there's no record it drops low it can't drop that low when there's a record there no record it drops low and that triggers the mechanism to know there's no more records 
So on playing the last record, it will discover there's no more records and it will shut off. And how does this one know there's no more records on this tripod? The only way I can think is there's, believe it or not, there's three little grippers in here. Three grippers. And as just before these things close up and drop the record, the grippers come out and grab the records. But you cannot really see it. I believe there's supposed to be little rubber pieces in there which commonly come off. They're all missing in there. And that changes the dimension of these gripper fingers and they cannot reach the record anymore. Now, I had another one of these, a slightly different version of this, a smaller version, that even without the rubber things, it was still able to grip, grip the record. It's gripping all the records above the one that's ready to drop. And that's why they all don't drop, because this thing's holding onto them. And I think when you, when you go to grab them, and there's nothing there, that's the point where this thing is sensitive to there's no records up here. Maybe maybe because the plunger goes farther than than it would otherwise. I don't know exactly. And then the record player knows there's no more records. Then it stops trying to drop them and turns off. I'm not sure that's correct, but I don't know how else it could work. And I could read the manual, but <laughs> yeah. Well. Gotta stop and ponder. Um, I ponder and think. Now, there's no adjustment. There's no adjustment for the trigger spot. There's, a, there's an adjustment here and an adjustment here. They probably have to do with the height of the tone arm when it's in operation, and also where it sets down on the record here. It's probably a, a fine adjustment on this. Which I haven't done anything with this. Wasn't this supposed to move all the way to here? Yes, there it goes. Another thing we can try, it's a kind of a crazy thing, there's a different speed. Let's let her rip. Now, now you can really hear the uh, whatever's interfering under here. That's another problem, isn't it? But you know what I think it is? I think it's that piece that's come forward towards the gears, it's getting knocked. No, 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 it can't be, can it? Can it? Can it slow this down, slow this down? No, that was a 1 to 5 ratio, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 it's a 1 to 5 ratio. It can't be in there. Don't know what it is. Here we go. Yeehaw! High speed. Come on. So you think that clicking has something to do with what the problem is? Stop. Nothing. There's all a way to start. And it thinks there's a record. It thinks it just dropped a record. Well, that's, not, that's quite a few functional problems. That's quite a few. I could feel the motor spinning down. I thought, oh, the motor hasn't stopped, but the motor has stopped. Well, that's lots of observations there. Uh, I'm going to go away now and uh, do other stuff. Uh, I, I don't know what to make of it, really. Uh, I don't know what to do next, except uh, take a break. I think that's the name of the game here. Have a break. Well, it's now the next day. It's July 30th. I left my shop yesterday and never got back into it again. I did study the manual uh, as much as I could stomach, and uh, I couldn't, I can't, I just can't see my way through to understanding uh, all the ins and outs of how this works. But never mind that. I came in this morning just before starting the video that you're watching now. I just played the record, or ran the record player once, and wouldn't you know it, it, it worked. <laughs> Let's try it again. So let's just see what happens here. It's 
making quite a thumping sound, isn't it? Look at that. Thumping stop. It actually turned itself off. So that's the third time in a row now it has worked properly. Except for that thumping sound. Let's try it again. Let's put a record on there and let it drop. Sounds like an old clock. Should be over in a sec. I want to let it do its own thing here. One of the times it started skipping right at this point. Point. Still playing music here. Here we go. certainly makes some strange sounds, but it's working. Sound of a gun. <laughs> I don't know why it didn't work, and I don't know why it works. It's just possible, I guess, just exercising it has moved some lubrication around into some spot where it was uh, lacking, maybe? I don't know. Let's see if we can figure out what that sound is. That's underneath here. This wheel itself is making that sound because of the chips in it. There are actual chips in it now. Hmm. The, actual, the, the running surface is smooth. But just underneath there, I can see there are some pieces chipped out of it from my grinding operation. That was, is that what's making the sound? Flip, 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 flip. Sounds about right, doesn't it? So, let's see if we can make this uh, motor operate here on manual. keep going so we can't hear it now but it's not up against the uh, you know the rim of the platter the platter is like a big speaker so if you whack on the side of it you can certainly feel that thump 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 in my finger son of a gun So it's the right pace. This is almost certainly what it is. Son of a gun. I may have to get a new wheel here. I, mean, I, I, I had another record player in here a couple of months ago and I ground you know, maybe a millimeter off of this and it wasn't big enough afterwards. <laughs> um, <coughs> that caught me by surprise. I'll do the same thing with this one. How come the manual doesn't stick? What do you do about this? I, you know, really replace this.
Okay, uh, what to do next with this now? If it, uh, I mean, it operates, so I, I can continue doing things with it. It just makes that terrible sound. Why would that sound stop or lighten up so much when the tone arm lifts up? I don't know, interesting question. How can I be sure that it's the wheel and not something else? Because it has quite a metallic sort of sound to it. it. Sounds like a metallic rattle. It doesn't really sound like a thumping flat tire sort of sound. Maybe there is more going on. It's quite possible that uh, as long as uh, I have the platter off, I'll never discover what it is. So these parts, which I talked a lot about in earlier videos, are sticking out here, the kicker part. It's not sticking out now. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, wonder, wonder. There's a good chance that from time to time I have the machine stopped in an inappropriate place. It's not finished. It's not in its neutral spot. And then I'm making observations that are false in a sense because the stop switch isn't in the right spot or something of that sort. Now what's this manual switch do? Starts the motor, doesn't move any parts, and then it just flips back to off. It's not off, it's still going. To get it off, it, it pushed stop. It doesn't help. So things are still not 100% here. I mean, surely stop stops it. Um, maybe not. Maybe with this wheel out of place here. So I think, did I see the kicker come out when I did that? The motor's still turning. It's in that spring spot when I got this here. Uh, <coughs> I put the platter back on just to make it go around to the proper stop. Let's still spinning. Cut the power off to make it stop. That, that doesn't sound like a rubber tire. That sounds like something metal. It figured out that there was no record to uh, to play. And it's, it went to the stop position. And it stopped. <laughs> the wheel, the uh, intermediate wheel is not engaged right now. It's not moving. It's sitting still. This is moving. Well, where'd the sound go? I was just about to comment on. There it is. What is that? It goes away for a bit when you turn it backwards. Turning this backwards shouldn't do anything. Mr. Record Player, what seems to be the problem? <laughs> How's this supposed to help? It's 
That's very interesting. I hear a grindy sound out here. And in here I just hear kind of a uh, bushing, a dry bushing sort of sound, kind of a in here, but out here it's rattly stuff. This rattly stuff. So could it be I'm spinning the idle uh, wheel uh, freely? It's not up against the motor capistan, so maybe maybe the the wheel is turning under there. This is just. There's two or three different sounds in there. Jeepers creepers. This isn't turning so freely. There's there's a there's a grinding in here. Ah, this is not turning very freely. I mean this should spin. Did I do it down too tight? Don't feel like it. Somewhere's near spinning. So I did not lubricate this at all. There's something really grabbing to it, grabbing on it. Hmm. What, uh, what could have happened here? Can't say I made observations before I took it off before. It's really bad. It really feels bad. That's my CV radio starting to come on. Well, I could just throw a little lubrication in there and see what happens. Like it should have that much kind of play in it? I don't think so. This is supposed to be fixed at a certain height. How can it have this much play? spot. Maybe there were speed problems with this. I think it's sinking too low. Did I put it back together wrong? Is that, is that, is that the adjustment for, for here? No. I don't see the whole thing going up and down. The speed is set raise it and I'm thinking it could be sitting this high it should be sitting this high something something's not right here getting a very sinking feeling on this what could be wrong under there So the, the nut comes up against the collar. It can't go any higher. That that much play is in there.
plastic, basically a plastic washer acting as the bottom bushing on this. Uh, you know what this is on a uh, it's a conical shape here this thing's going to want to walk upwards and it tend to want to pull itself up if you have play in it I don't get it but it certainly is it's really binding this way I mean it hardly moves what is happening something. So this sleeve is not going all the way down to that plastic piece. It's stopping short. Why would that be? Maybe because of this. Maybe I could think it would fall and sit on this, but it wasn't. It was sitting up here. This just can't be right. This cannot be right. I didn't pull any washers out of here. saying it can't be right but what else can it be I'm hesitant to lubricate it because um, I think there's something else going on Wouldn't think you'd get uh, ever get stable speed if you didn't have this thing height controlled. This tiny, tiny washer. <laughs> Maybe it was a bigger one and it wore down. That's just stupid. That's a stupid. An idea. I don't know. Other than lubricating it, I don't know what to. Now let's put some of this in. No better. It's if I push down on it, I cannot turn it. I push down on it just a little bit. What is going on? What was that sound? Holy smokes. Oil made it stick. Can that happen? It's 
hitting this. Yeah, it's in direct contact. Okay, something stupid's happening here. That's probably what that noise was too. Ching, 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 ching. Well, come on. So I can see the uh, the outline of the nut right on the surface of this. The nut was driven right down onto it, just like I'm doing. It's as if there's something missing in here. Something more should be in there, holding this up. Oh my gosh, where, where would that be? Where would it have gone? Oh, did it exist? Oh my gosh. What has happened? 